in the headlines. Bauchi State Governor Visit Warchi warns against fake news. Police in Kano recover vehicle with IED materials and guns four days after Sabungari explosion. Abducted Anambra lawmaker beheaded. And on the foreign scene, millions stranded as flooding causes havoc in Bangladesh. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. And now the news in full. The Bauchi state government has cautioned against the spread of fake news, especially in northern Nigeria. The governor gave the caution when he visited Warji, local government area, where crisis erupted in the aftermath of an alleged blasphemous message posted on social media by one Roda Jatau, an old staff of the medical department of Warji, local government area. Governor Bela noted that despite the good side of social media, if not properly used, can lead to destruction of lives and property, especially in volatile areas. Because his own sensibilities, his own feelings have been touched. Let us not do it, please. And let us not harbor people who will do it. This social media is an evil. You know? Technology is good, but sometimes it can be it can be used against us. Even the girl who started this, she borrowed this in Bangana. The security has briefed me. So you can see, but certainly in my district head, two wrongs cannot make a right. We should restrain ourselves. We should restrain ourselves and be peaceful with each other. I never imagined I was me, I was joking with uh, Pastor Ozaka. I said, well, if this thing is happening in Bogoro, I will know that is where a lot of intolerance was exhibited, but not in Warji. Please. And the, the Kano State Police Command has confirmed that nine people died as a result of the Sabungari gas and chemical gas explosion of May 17, 2022. The police also said the explosion is suspected to have occurred as a result of mixed chemical and gas reaction exposed to heat, such as fire or spac. Mm -hmm. A statement by the Kano Police Public Relations Officer Abdullahi Harune Kiawa listed items recovered at the scene to include five bottles of different brands of acidic liquid, three bags of potassium substance, one cherry can of mixed chemicals, six and a half a carton of snuff and five drums of polymer. Kiawa noted that arrests have been made linking one of the collapsed shop with dealings in sales of illicit, toxic chemical substances and combustible uh, materials support, suspected rather to be used for making improvised explosive devices, adding that evidence of purchase was also recovered. A lawmaker representing Agwata constituency 2 of the Anambra State House of Assembly, Okechuko Koye, has been beheaded. And this, the severed head of the deceased lawmaker was mounted as Chisco Pak in Amichi community in Inewi South, a local government area of the state. And while presenting the state's revised budget to the lawmaker, on Friday, Soludo commented on the development, saying that security operatives are working to rescue the victim. Okoye, who held from Ethiopia, the community of Governor Charles Soludo uh, was kidnapped in Aguata on Sunday. And the gruesome mother of the lawmaker happened weeks after an army cop was beheaded by suspected members of outlawed indigenous people. And the students of Kaduna College of Education, Gedongwaya, who were doctor three days ago, have regained the freedom. The students, Rachel Edwin, Esther Ishaya, Promise Tanimo and Beauty Luka were abducted in Jama'a local government area of the state. The kidnappers had demanded a huge ransom, and according to Benjamin Fier, president of the Students' Union and the school, 
on, on Saturday told Daily Trust that the abductors released them on Friday. FIA did not disclose if any ransom was paid, but only said they were rushed to Sir Patrick Ibrahim Yako Memorial Hospital in Kafanchan for medical checkup, after which they were reunited with their relatives. And in another development, the presidency says negotiations are ongoing to rescue those abducted on the Kaduna Abuja rail line earlier in the year. Presidential aide Garbashe, who said this on Friday while reacting to the suspension of the resumption of operations on the rail track. He explained that government is committed to ensuring that those affected by the attack and still in captivity will be released alive, even though the negotiations might be difficult. She will say the government wants normalcy to return to Kaduna Abuja route, noting that there is an improvement in security of the area. From Kaduna State to Kwara, where the state command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has arrested two human traffickers, uh, Gift Rita and Joyce Samuel, who are alleged to specialize in trafficking teenagers of girls, especially for commercial sex activities, from Patakot to Ilori. And the state commandant of the NSCDC, Iskil Makinde, said the traffickers of the false claim brought a four teenage girls between the ages of 14 and 17 into the state to work in a hotel as prostitutes. Addressing journalists during the parade of the suspected human traffickers, the Kwara State Commandant of the NSCDC, Iskil Maikinde, said the command gathered that the victims were brought to the state without the knowledge of their parents. They were trafficked from uh, Port Harcourt down to Kwara State. And the uh, most senior there is the one that trafficked them down to Kwara State. She lied to them that they are going to Lagos for hotel work. But unfortunately, all the underage guests, one seventeen, the holders among them is just 17, others are 15 and 14 respectively. Yep, said the victims will be rehabilitated through counseling to help them recover from the trauma. The rehabilitation is part of our mandate. The victims will be rehabilitated. You know, uh, of course, the suspects, well, after investigation and we consider the level of involvement, the, the, the suspect will be, uh, you know, prosecuted depending on the level of involvement. So, but the victims, they, they will go through the process of uh, rehabilitation. Meanwhile, the suspects said they were only trying to assist their victims to raise money for their upkeep. Now ask me for help, that I should help those guests. So it's of them to go and be making money and be giving those guests for them to stay on their own. So that I would make money, anything they want to use that and do, they'll be doing it in their life. They'll be doing it. Then I helped them to help them before their boyfriend, that call. That boyfriend, now the guy now be sending me a message, that boyfriend is disturbing, disturbing them to come back. Then because without them, they cannot feed. The NSCDC has since handed over the victims and the suspects to the appropriate authorities for necessary action. In another disturbing development, the National Emergency Management Agency NEMA on Saturday disclosed that one person died while, while or one other person was rescued from the debris of a collapsed two-story building along Freeman Street, Lagos Island on Saturday. It said the building, which is still on the construction, caved in as a result of torrential rain, which started around 2 p.m. on Saturday. NEMA Public Relations Officer in the Southwest Region, Ibrahim Fariloye, confirmed the incident. He said officials of both the state and federal emergency management agency, NEMA, LASEMA, as well as officials of the state fire service, were on ground floor to carry out rescue operations. You're still watching Trust TV News updates coming up after the break.
We'll take a look at how 16,000 Sokoto farmers get famine tools. This and more after the short timeout. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update. But before the rest of the news, let's take a look at our top stories again. We told you that Bauchi State Governor Fasit Wadji wants against fake news. And the police in Kano recover vehicle with IED materials and guns four days after Savongari explosion. And moving on to other news ahead of the 2023 electionary campaign, stakeholders have been urged to abide by rules and regulations governing elections as contained in the Electoral Act. Kaduna State President Electoral Commissioner Asmao Umaykodi in a stakeholders meeting said it will allow the work of the commission to flow easier. Fatima Sali Laden tells us more. The commissioner said Kaduna has recorded the highest number of registered voters in Northern State in the ongoing voter registration. Yes, INEC as of Monday recorded, um, Kaduna State Branch recorded the highest number in the Northern States, not in Nigeria, in the Northern States. Kaduna is now the highest in the North and the fourth highest across the Federation. She said internally displaced persons will not be disenfranchised by any means. INEC conducted elections in 2019 and even as at that time there are places that we had IDPs. So it's not a new thing for INEC. We already have that policy and we are going to conduct elections. Even where the IDPs are, we have already sent our staff to go there and do the CVR for them. So we are aware of them. We know their locations and elections will hold everywhere. Nobody in Nigeria will be disenfranchised for whatever reason. The commissioner also added that the commission is determined to hold the free, fair and credible elections come 2023. Fatima Salah Laden, Trust TV News, Kaduna. 
and still on 2023 election marches, a cross-section of Gombe residents have called on party delegates to nominate competent leaders to ensure that credible leaders emerge in the 2023 general elections. The mid call was speaking with Ibrahim Ismail on the expectations from delegates ahead of primary elections by Nigerian political parties, where aspirants will emerge as candidates that will contest for elective positions in the 2023 general elections. The report. Primary election is one of the first and most important stage in preparation for election, according to Section 84 of the Electoral Act 2022. The primary election enables political parties to democratically nominate candidates for elective positions, and delegates play an important role in that regard as they nominate candidates. Nigerians have expectations from party delegates to nominate someone that will bring the anticipated change in the country ahead of the 2023 general elections. My message to delegates is they should know that they have been entrusted they should know that it's their responsibility to select a good leader, a leader that will bring development, a leader that will carry each and everyone alone, a leader that will uh, bring positive development. And um, my message to um, these um, delegates is, in order for us to have a good governance, I think we should stop, we should stop collecting all the bribes and stuff like that, I think. I wish we would not repeat the same mistake we did in the previous election and then we would choose the right um, candidates for them to govern us. However, some Nigerians have trust deficit in the process as the system has failed them over and over, they said. No money, no everything. People, they suffer. Huh? People, they suffer. Let God release everything normal. My message be let the God to take control and bring the better person where will be the Lord of this in Nigeria. Where this Nigeria to be in good and successful. As part of activities line up for the 2023 general elections, Independent National Electoral Commission INEC has scheduled 3rd June 2022 as the deadline for the conduct of of party primaries from Gondi. Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And in agriculture, about 16,000 farmers have been enlisted to benefit from the Sokoto State Free Improved Seeds and Subsidize Agriculture Imputes to be distributed for 2022 wet season famine. The State Commissioner for Agriculture said farmers drawn from the 23 local government areas of the state will benefit from the subsidized impute to boost their production. Trust TV's Idris Chabrin reports that the agriculture imputes have already been procured for distribution across all the 23 local government areas of the state. The report. These are irrigation pumping machines, rice milling, flour milling machines, tomato pest processing machines, rice and tomato seeds ready to be distributed to both medium, small and large scale farmers across Sokoto State. In these programs, there are a lot of interventions. Farmers are going to be uh, distributed with uh, fertilizers, improved seeds, chemicals, and uh, other agricultural related inputs. And they are going to be given to them free of charge. And it cuts across some majority of the local government areas. And a lot of money is sink into that uh, area. Some of the inputs already stock for the program include over 37,000 of 50 kg bags of NPK fertilizer, 1,500 pumping machines, over 30 million machines, over 600 insecticide sprayers, among others. We have the small milling, flower milling machine that can mill uh, wheat into flour. And also we have uh, the rice milling machine also. After the rice production, then uh, those that are uh, in the in the process in, in, in the in the processing aspect of the value chain, uh, they are being given the 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 processing machineries uh, to for the processing of the uh, 
produce being produced by the farmers. Although some farmers have recently complained that the state government intervention is not reaching them, but the State Commissioner of Agriculture says measures have been put in place to ensure that inputs have reached all the beneficiaries. Last year, uh, during the farming season of last year, we sold a bag of MPK as a cost of 4,000 naira and the urea as a cost of 5,000 naira. If you go and ask how much is it in the market, urea now costs not less than 18,000 naira. So you can see the subsidy given to farmers and these fertilizers are distributed to all local government areas, to all nooks and corners. Every what gets its own share of the fertilizers. Meanwhile, the state government is advising farmers to plant drought-resistant crops due to the NIMET prediction of low rainfall this rainy season. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Sokoto. And away from agriculture sector in Sokoto State, the government has been urged to thoroughly assess the level of safety in communities before returning displaced persons to such areas. Stakeholders are insisting that this will convince such persons the government is concerned about their welfare. The stakeholders argue that another confidence boost will be for government to provide better resources for resettlement of victims than it is being given to repentant Boko Haram members. Take a look at the report. The years of conflict in the northeast has witnessed destruction of infrastructures in communities, destabilized economic activities, and denied freedom of movement for millions of people due to security challenges. But with the relative peace returning in the state, the surrender of Boko Haram and ISWAP fighters, and most especially the resettlement of displaced persons in their communities. The Peace Ambassadors Center for Humanitarian Aid and Empowerment in partnership with British Council engaged with key stakeholders on policy dialogue tagged building resilience in regained communities of Borno State. They want government to involve all stakeholders in the process of providing solutions to returned communities. The, the objective of this uh, dialogue is for us as a key stakeholders to come together and then to come up with a policy brief on how to uh, ensure that people were adequately supported, every act of place, roadward ensuring that there are, there are enough mechanisms to improve the resilience of the people of Borno State. As we all know, this community is full of resilient people. After 13 years of insurgency, and you still find everyone, including you journalists, coming out to do your job despite all the hustles. Investigation and law enforcement actions Prosecutions, domestic and international cooperation are also necessary to mitigate vulnerabilities and aggressively intervene in terrorist crime. Apart from agriculture, what are the other options after the season where they can engage themselves so that the mindset of our people, we are talking about unemployment, we are talking about People mind and visit and doing nothing and then purposing nothing. So what are our plans? How do we assist the government in making this mistake? The stakeholders also want victims of insurgency be treated better than terrorists who have repented as well as carry out environmental assessment in destroyed communities and ensure safety of returned IDPs. And in business, the United Nations Global Compact Network Nigeria has inaugurated a two-year UN Global Compact Africa Strategy and African Regional Hub to mobilize businesses to the continent. The program is designed to support companies in post-COVID-19 era to align their operation for a sustainable and inclusive future through a two-year strategic plan from 2021 to 2023. The UN President Coordinator for Nigeria, Matthias Schmale, at the inauguration in Abuja urged the federal government to do more to sustain Nigeria's leading position in African continental trade. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, 
princess a dejo ke o rolokbe a defuli a defuli re reiterated the government's commitment towards encouraging businesses to thrive in Nigeria and Africa at large. Ambassador of China to Nigeria, Choe Jansho, conversed the support from the UN for Nigeria to achieve set goals. Is there a strong enough legal framework and is it adhered to and what sanctions exist if it isn't? That's one. I think a second big part where and Nigeria could show an example and currently isn't sufficiently is domestic resource mobilization. We talked a lot uh, uh, about local partnerships in the previous event, uh, finding local solutions to problems. And so I think the focus cannot be on what can Nigeria teach others if it doesn't practice it itself? And there really is much more to be done around domestic resource mobilization. An aspect of that is tax regimes. You know, there needs to be an honest conversation on who pays taxes on the one hand and are people, including businesses, fulfilling their tax obligations? And then linked to that, what's the expenditure side that brings in government? Are, is the revenue that is generated also from the economy uh, for public service invested into the right um, uh, sectors? And an example of what I mean by that is education and health. Very, very apt and very welcome development to strengthen our um, collaboration and uh, national development both at the in Nigeria, Africa and the, the world at large. Um, we have recognized also the importance of partnership in all of this and the role that each stakeholders must play to effectively deliver the UN Global Compact Strategy for Africa. I believe that without the business sector, the company sectors, they cannot achieve this goal because company is not only a group of people, it's not only the provider of food, clothes, the daily needs of the people, also products or the, the, the services. The most important thing is creating the way of the people, the way of life. So I think that really company is really very important. And on the international scene, heavy rains have caused a widespread flooding in parts of Bangladesh and India, leaving millions stranded and at least 57 dead. In Bangladesh, about 2 million people are marooned by the worst floods in the country's northeast for nearly two decades, while nearly 1 million people have been affected by the flooding. Chief Government Administrator of the Shilhad region, Moshiro Hossein, said at least 100 villages as the Kanganj are, are inundated after flood water rushing from India's northeast breached a major embankment on the Barak River. And uh, finally, in sport, the Nigerian Baseball and Softball Association has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Embassy of Japan and the Japan African Baseball and Softball JAPS Foundation to develop the game in the country. Shinya Tomonari, president of JAPS, said a five year partnership with MBSA Base. will focus on Nigeria based baller ship development plan. And the ambassador of Japan to Nigeria, Kazuyoshi Masu. Sunaga said that the sport will help kids learn democratic ideas, respect for rules, and build a peace. On her part, Monishola Makunjola, acting president of MBSA, thanked the guests for supporting and donating equipment to the growth of the game, adding that it is a new dawn for the association. And with that, we've come to the end of news update on Trust TV. For more news, connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching.